Happy New Year, tiny friends. I hope you all have had a wonderful holiday. If you're new to my channel, I'm Jolene. Welcome to Tiny Keyhole Minis. Today I'm going to be working on the Josephine house and I'm going back up into that upstairs hallway and I am going to create the non-functional pull-down ladder for the attic. So I'm beginning with a piece of scrap graph paper. I'm going to use this as my template to create the two frames that I'm going to need. I'm just going to guesstimate the measurements here. So I'm going to begin with two and three quarter inches for the width. And I'm going to try and stay on the blue line so that I can have a nice clean and even edge around my frame. Right now, the two and three quarter measurements falls just under the blue line but that's okay. I'm gonna move it over to the blue line. So I'm just over two and three quarters. For the length, I'm gonna go with four inches. I think that four inches should be good. When I cut out my template, I'm gonna give it a dry fit to make sure that these measurements are gonna be okay. Okay, so I have a piece that is two, just over two and three quarters inches wide and four inches long. These measurements work out perfectly fine. I've already tested it out. And now I'm gonna begin creating the two frames that I'm gonna need. I'm using this really thin wood that I purchased off of Timu. You get 10 sheets in a pack. I like using this wood. It says it's basswood. I don't know if it's bass, balsam, or whatever the case may be. It's super easy to cut and I don't mind using it. It's pretty good for these little miniatures that I've been making. And I'm gonna be using some coffee stir sticks. I'm gonna be using these skinny sticks, these flat craft sticks, and then I do have some coffee stir sticks with a rounder edge. And I'm gonna use my miter shears, which are also known as easy cutters. So just moving my guard to a 45 degree angle, I am going to cut my frame edges. When you're using these, you just wanna make sure that you have your piece of wood flush and nice and tight up against your cutting guide and just give it a snip. And that is all to it. So I'm gonna cut all my trimming for my frames this way. This is how I would make my picture frames or you could make your mirror frames this way as well but I'm gonna lay them around my template and get all my pieces that I need to measure. And I'm gonna create two of these frames. Now that I got all my pieces cut out and measured, I'm gonna sand them before gluing them together. And when you're sanding your miter cuts, you kind of wanna sand very lightly because if you sand too hard, you may end up misshaping your cut. So you want to kind of be very careful when you're doing this and just give it a couple light rounds on each end. I'm just sanding it to get the rough edges or the splinters out of there so that my pieces can fit together a little more snug. I'm just going to use my tacky glue to glue these pieces together. My tacky glue works just fine. There's no need to pull out my wood glue. I like to use my wood glue for other things, for sculpting and filling and when I really have bigger pieces. For these smaller pieces, tacky glue or white PVA glue will work just fine. And I'm just using my guide on my mat to make sure that these are nice and straight as I place them and glue them together. Okay, so I have my two frames completed and now I need to create the platforms for them. One will be the door, one will be the base that the ladder sits on, and I'm just gonna place them on the sheet of wood and then just trace out the inside square because I want them both to fit inside the frame. Before cutting these two pieces out, I'm gonna take my hand drill and just drill a hole in one of the pieces. This is gonna be the door, and the hole will be for the pull cord. Okay, so my pieces are cut out. They both fit inside the frames. One fits more snug than the other, but I may just play around to see if they just need to be swapped. 
but uh, I'm not really worried about the piece that's going to hold the ladder because that's just actually going to sit on the floor. I really need to be more accurate when it comes to the door. I'm going to begin with the ladder and I'm going to create another frame right around the top of the base and this is what the ladder is going to sit inside. So I'm using the flat skinny sticks and I'm just going to measure the pieces that I need and glue them down sitting right on top of this piece of wood. Okay, I have all my pieces glued down. I haven't glued the base down to the frame yet. And this is kind of just gonna be like the case that holds the ladder. So now I'm gonna take those coffee stir sticks with the rounder edges and I'm actually gonna double these up. So I'm gonna measure out the pieces that I need. I'll be making three sections of the ladder. So I've gotta get all my pieces measured and cut out and glued together and then I can begin popping these into place and arranging them. I'm gonna glue the first section of the ladder right into place. I've got the sides of the ladder put right up against the sides of this little box and I'm using a wood bamboo skewer to create the steps. And I glue them into place, but I haven't glued them right on the board. So there is a little bit of space between the step and the backboard. I'm gonna glue the second section right on top of this section. And I'm just applying some glue right on the steps along the side. And I also have a thin bead of glue running on the bottom, on the back side of this piece that I'm gonna glue down. So I'm just gonna lay it down and press it nice and tight up against the side. And just keep an eye on that, that it stays straight up and doesn't lean on me. And I'm just going to do the same thing to the second side. I'm placing some glue on the steps. I have a thin bead of glue on the piece I'm going to glue down. And then I'm just going to put it right into place. And then pushing it nice and tight against the side. So that's going to be where my second section is going to begin. And now I'm going to glue the steps in place and I'm just going to glue these steps in between the spaces of the first set of steps. So it looks something like this. And I'm using my clamp to keep these pieces nice and straight while they dry. Okay, I did some work and I added the third section and I just glued the sides of that ladder section on top of the previous one. So you can see here how that looks. And I've also angled the bottom of the legs and those would be the parts that actually touch the floor. And again, I laid the steps right in between the spaces of the previous section. So they kind of stagger a little. I probably could have made this part a little smaller as far as width. I feel like it's a little too wide, but that's okay. It's not gonna matter. It's just gonna be sitting up. It doesn't really work. But uh, I went ahead and added more to the frame because I just felt like it needed more dimension. I didn't like how flat it looked. And this actually helps support it a little better and hold it together so it's not so flimsy. I'm gonna put the door in at an angle and just have it peeking open just slightly. So it'll be something like that. If I wanted to have a closed door, it would look something like this. It would fit nice and snug inside, and then I would put it on the ceiling. But I feel like having the door open just slightly just gives it more interest. Okay, I've gone ahead and given this piece a really good sanding all the way around the whole base just to smooth it down and even it out. And now it's ready to be glued down to the frame. So I'm just putting a small bead right around the whole base. This is what the pieces look like. And I went ahead and added that additional trimming around this piece. And you can see what that looks like. 
So now I am ready to paint my pieces and I'm going to be using my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to use some white acrylic to paint the door. I've been using Waverly Antique Wax for quite a few years now and I've learned some tricks and techniques for applying this. You can use it like stain and you can use it like acrylic paint. You can apply it as thin or as thick as you would like. And right now I'm just adding some water to it to help spread it out some. This way I'm not using as much of the product. It dries pretty quickly. And now that my pieces are dried, I'm just gonna take my nail file and lightly sand around the frame just to wear down some of the antique wax a little bit. I'm gonna do this to both pieces. For the latter, I'm gonna wear away the midsection of each step because that's where it would normally wear away over the years as it's being climbed and handled. I'm gonna go ahead and continue the process, filing around the sides of the ladder and around the whole base and the frame. If you're using antique wax and you're new to it and you've got some thicker areas, this stuff files down pretty nicely despite the, how thick it may feel. You just wanna make sure that it's completely dry before filing. I had to fix one of the steps because I was pressing too hard on it while I was filing and popped it out of place. So I just re-glued that. To age these pieces, I'm using black acrylic and water, and I'm just running it in between the crease where the top frame meets the bottom frame. I'm just gonna let that solution seep right in those seams between the two frames. For the ladder, I'm gonna add the solution to the connecting points where the steps meet the sides of the ladder. Using a Q-tip, just to dab away all the excess. Now I'll do the same thing I did with the first frame. I'll just run it through each seam where each uh, level is connected to the previous one so it can seep inside those creases. For the door, I'm using the same Q-tip. I dipped it in the dirty paint water and I'm just picking up a little bit of brown acrylic. So I'm going very lightly with this. I'm gonna take the Q-tip and just run it right around the edge of the door. I'm also gonna apply a little bit around the top of the door where I would think the hands would touch it and grab it and just dirty it up lightly. I'm going really lightly on this because I don't wanna suggest that um, everybody's hands were super dirty, but over the years, it would wear down and stain up around the corners and the edges and in the places where you might grab the door to pull it down. So I'm just dabbing the paint on and using the Q-tip to blend the edges so that I don't have any hard lines. And I'm just gonna layer it and build it up until I'm happy with it. Now I'm just gonna run the Q-tip around the rest of the door just to dull down some of that white. Uh, it's very lightly, but it does help bring that stark white down. Okay, I think that's good for the door. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I'm gonna leave it as is and add some hardware and some more details. I went ahead and made the hole a little bit bigger because I wanna use a tiny little grommet that I have. I originally was gonna use this micro jump ring that I have, but I thought the grommet would be a better choice since it can actually fit inside the hole. So I'm using my Aline's Jewelry and Metal Glue 
and I'm just popping this into place. I debated on using a chain or kind of like a rope cord. I decided to go with this rope cord and this is actually a waxed uh, thread. It's kind of like a waxed embroidery thread. And I've just looped it around this tiny jump ring and pulled the ends through. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of that jewelry and metal glue just to lock it into place so it doesn't loosen up on me. After applying the glue, I'm just giving the thread a nice tight pull and I'm just going to hold it nice and tight for a few seconds until the glue takes hold. Okay, the knot is nice and secured and locked down, so now I know this rope will not loosen up on me. Okay, I just pulled it through the hole, made a knot and then I glued the knot into place. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna use some of these clips. These are called bow tie clips. And I'm just gonna cut off the straight ends. I'm gonna use those as brackets uh, for the ladder. So I'm cutting two larger pieces and then I'm going to cut two smaller pieces that will sit underneath the feet of the ladder. You'll see what I mean. <laughs> I'm using Aline's jewelry and metal glue to attach these pieces on. Super glue works just fine. I just tend to go to the jewelry and metal glue because I have it sitting right here in front of me. And I just end up grabbing that first. Um, I'm placing the larger pieces right here on this end. And that's what that's gonna look like. I am gonna do both sides, even though you won't be seeing the second side. Um, it just feels more complete in my head, so. <laughs> and now I'm gonna add the smaller pieces. And although I have filed down the frames to make it look like they're worn down, I still wanna add some sort of varnish. So I'm going to use the DuraClear matte varnish just to coat the pieces. Now moving on to my door and I want the door to look something like this. So I'm just going to use my tacky glue. I'm going to run the glue around the inside corners and all along the inside. The door fits in the frame pretty snug without the glue and that'll just give it more security. So that's why I wanted to be more accurate when it came to the door. I'm just going to pop it into place and make some adjustments. And then I'm going to flip it over and add additional glue along the back side, cleaning up any excess glue. And I'm going to let this actually sit overnight just to be on the safe side before installing it. Okay, it's the next day. Here are my pieces. They are all ready to be installed. So this is the ladder. It's got all the hardware and details that I want to add to them, the door with the pull cord, and you can see how it's slightly open. It'll go like this, only facing the other direction. And you can see the glue on the back. I painted this side of the door black to try and conceal some of the white because I decided not to paint the ceiling underneath it which um, I could have, but I don't think you're really gonna be able to see that. So I just skipped that step. Now, placing the ladder into the attic, the feet have to face 
this direction in order to make sense for the door underneath. And I'm just gonna place it back here and just kind of line it up to where the door is gonna be. The door will be um, down here up underneath that section and just in that back corner. I am gonna glue this piece into place, but I am not gonna do that just yet because I still have to redo this whole back wall. I wanna make it look like an old attic wall. So until that wall is finished, I can't really glue this yet, but it will eventually get glued down into place. Okay, for the door, I'm just gonna give it a dry fit, find out exactly where I wanna place it. I don't want it to be right up against the trimming of the ceiling. I wanna leave some space around that. So I'm just trying to figure out where I'm gonna place it. Once I get a good idea on where it's gonna be placed, I'm just gonna add tacky glue and I've placed the tacky glue all around the flat edge of the frame. And now I'm just gonna hold it into place for a little while until it takes hold. I will also be adding some painter's tape just to help it stay up until that glue starts to dry. I also had a chance to finish that side wall and that is now ready for family portraits. So this is what that looks like. And there is my door. Poor Miss Margot's down there wondering where that draft is coming from. And, well, this old door just won't stay shut. Maybe she needs like a little latch to keep it from peeking open. Okay, tiny friends, that completes today's project. I want to thank you all for being here and welcome to all my new subscribers, thank you so much for all your support. If you've enjoyed this video today, please hit that like button and give it a thumbs up. And let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you would like to see more of my miniatures, please subscribe and hit the top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. Until next time, tiny friends. You all have a lovely day, and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.